Tonight, the investigation into a shooting in Duluth Central Hillside remains active. Everything we know about what happened. Plus, relief coming. Tens of millions of dollars is ready to help families and businesses impacted by the pandemic in Michigan. Plus, drive through vaccinations. We give you an inside look at the unique way Carleton County is vaccinating their EMS workers. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. Kristen is off tonight. A developing story in Duluth Central Hillside tonight where police confirmed they're investigating a shooting that happened in an apartment building. CBS 3's Ryan Campo reports from the scene. Yeah, Tony, police have been on scene here at Lake Avenue and 4th Street for a few hours now. And within the last 10 minutes, the number of police squad cars has dwindled down to just one. We do know that a person was shot multiple times and is now being treated at a Duluth hospital. Right as I pulled up to the scene earlier this afternoon, an ambulance drove off. Authorities have not shared much about the victim or how bad their injuries are. They have also not said anything about any potential suspects or if those involved know each other. As we said, this is an ongoing investigation. Crime scene tape just removed block that was blocking off the area. We hope to learn more throughout the night. We'll keep you posted if we hear any new information both on air and online, cbs3duluth.com. But for now, Tony, I'll send things back to you. All right, something we'll certainly keep following. Thanks, Ryan. Meanwhile, the day after a 16-year-old was shot and killed on the Fond du Lac Reservation, authorities have issued a warrant for the suspect's arrest. It happened around 1.15 Monday morning. When authorities arrived, they found a 16-year-old boy's body outside. Tonight, authorities say they're searching for Joseph Forenkam, who we're told is from the Cloquet area. They've issued a second-degree manslaughter warrant for his arrest. Authorities don't know where he is and say he may be armed. They say he may be with his mother, Little Fawn Forenkam. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. Authorities say they located a third person who is believed to be involved. They are cooperating with the investigation. Let's get our first look at the weather now this evening. Dave, is the snow here yet or is it still inching its way along? And it's not on the Twin Ports, but it's okay. just about everywhere else to the west and down towards the south and now even creeping towards the east. We'll show you that in just a little bit with the latest Doppler map. But right now we show you the advisories that we're facing because of this low pressure system. It'll be bringing its worst well to our south. Uh, roughly from Iowa in through Illinois and then heading towards the northeast. But we're on the northern edges of the system, so many of our towns are looking at a winter, with, winter weather advisory in Minnesota till 6 tomorrow morning. And for the snow belt, maybe till noon tomorrow. Near the Canadian border from the ranges up north, not such a big deal. No advisory there. We'll show you a map on the snow totals we're expecting here in just a bit as well. But the low pressure system, yeah, it's working up just outside the doorstep of the Twin Ports here. It's starting to push towards the Iron Ranges and east central Minnesota is getting it right now and it's crossing into northwestern Wisconsin. The rest of the region will follow suit as we get towards 8 o'clock tonight. So from 6 to 8 tonight is when we're expecting onset and then from 8 o'clock tomorrow morning till noon is when we expect it to leave. Our Wednesday day planner says 30 to 40 percent chance for this snow to continue through tomorrow morning. Then around lunchtime the snow should end. It'll be mostly cloudy working its way towards partly cloudy. High temp tomorrow of 20 degrees will be pretty close to normal for this time of year and this time around I don't think a big Arctic outbreak will follow on the heels of this low pressure system we may stay close to normal as we bring in the new year we'll talk about any more snow chances coming our way with the seven-day forecast shown in more detail in just a few more minutes thanks Dave both Minnesota and Wisconsin launched new dashboards to track COVID vaccinations today the data shows about 38,000 doses have been administered in Minnesota so far most of the Minnesotans vaccinated at this point are between the ages of 18 and 49. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, they've vaccinated more than 47,000 people. Wisconsin's data does not show age ranges. We have a link to both dashboards on our website. A drive through COVID-19 vaccine clinic has been going on in Carleton for about an hour now. The clinic is only open to Carleton County's EMS workers. CBS 3's Kendall Jarbo shares an inside look at the vaccination process. 
Right now I'm at the Carlton County Transportation Building where they started the first day of drive through COVID-19 vaccine distribution. Let's look right over here where one vaccine is being distributed. It's open today just for EMS workers. They're calling this a targeted drive through vaccine clinic, meaning it's just for those EMS workers because it's not available to the public just yet. The way this process works is it's a giant garage. The garage doors open up and a couple of cars will drive in. The doors then close in order to keep it nice and warm in here and the vaccine is distributed. The first phase of vaccines do go to these healthcare personnel workers direct, working directly with COVID-19. Carlton is using the Moderna vaccine at this clinic. And just moments ago, I spoke with Jenny Barda, disease prevention and control and immunization coordinator, who says this vaccine couldn't have come at a better time. And we finally have a way out of this pandemic. So thankfully, we received a vaccine just in time for the end of 2020. And I honestly could not have thought of a better Christmas present than to receive vaccine right at Christmas time. I'm told this vaccine process takes just about five minutes. Again, Carlton County is offering this drive through distribution clinic just for EMS right now. They're hoping to make it available to the public, but they're waiting to receive more vaccines. Thanks, Kendall. And Carlton County will do a public drive through vaccination clinic down the road after they receive more vaccines. Some encouraging news for St. Louis County and the state of Minnesota as coronavirus numbers are going down. According to Amy Westbrook, St. Louis County's Public Health Division Director, today the county saw 34 new cases. That is the lowest single-day case total since September. Westbrook says the governor's orders, as well as the community being more cautious, may have played a role in the decrease. Maybe people were taking a little bit more caution and notice of the increase in community transmission. Um, but yes, yeah, since... Uh, just the last um, week or so, week and a half, we've seen a decrease in cases, which has been really great. Well, case numbers have gone down. One startling statistic is remaining steady. We'll explain what that is coming up tonight at 10. In Wisconsin, a clinic had to discard hundreds of doses of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Officials said nearly 500 doses were kept unrefrigerated for too long at Aurora Medical Center in Grafton, which is near Milwaukee. Health officials said someone removed 50 vials from a refrigerator and never put them back overnight. Each vial contained 10 doses of the vaccine. An internal investigation found the failure was an unintended human error. Now, once the vaccine is thawed, it cannot be refrozen. Human error, um, which is, which is going to happen in any process. Anytime there's human involved, it, 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 things like that could happen. There have been nearly 40,000 doses of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine administered in Wisconsin so far. More relief is on the way for families and small businesses in Michigan. Governor Gretchen Whitner, Whit Whitmer excuse me, made that announcement today. At a news conference, she announced $106 million of relief. The bipartisan bill will allocate $56 million to be given to small businesses, $46 million will be given to people who have been laid off, and $3.5 million will be given to music venues. She still believes the government, federal government, needs to pass a larger stimulus bill. On Sunday, the president signed a COVID relief bill that provides some support for Michigan's unemployed workers. Once again, I want to urge the federal government to pass a bill that includes $2,000 in stimulus checks for American families. It's the right thing to do. Whitmer also has extended unemployment benefits through the end of March. Child advocates are speaking out after a 30-year-old Duluth man was charged in the death of his fiancé's three-year-old son. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez explains red flags you should look out for. He was my best friend. A parent's worst nightmare became a reality for a Duluth woman this year. We hear stories about it, but I never thought it was real, and I never thought it could happen to me ever, especially my child. Heather Richard's three-year-old son, Cameron, died in September. He was, he was loving, like he truly only knew love. Her fiancé, Jordan Carter, was charged with Cameron's murder three months after his death. When authorities first found Cameron, he was unresponsive. Doctors in Duluth say he had bruising down his body, a traumatic brain injury, and a fractured rib. He was rushed to Children's Minnesota Hospital in Minneapolis. Cameron died two days later. 
which jarred New Carter for 14 years, but says there were never any red flags. But for those people that do have the red flags, watch out for them. Program coordinator at Otto Brenner Trust Center for Safe and Healthy Children, Rebecca Full, says child abuse is more common than people think. It's really a public health crisis and a public health issue. She says parents and bystanders should look out for specific signs of abuse. If there is bruising, um, for example, on the ears or, um, you know, the torso, the neck, those are really big red flags in terms of injury for children under the age of four. Full says if your child attends daycare, you should be mindful if providers use negative attributions to describe your child, like pointing out your child doesn't like them. Um, and this is like a baby who is, you know, maybe six months, seven months. Um, so putting those sort of like negative attributions and unrealistic expe expectations of development on children can be a red flag as well. Other red flags could be if you notice a change in your child's behavior. If you have a child who's normally very talkative and they've become withdrawn, that might be something that we should take notice of or vice versa. Full ads asking your child open-ended questions helps too. Did you do today at so-and-so's house? And, you know, how did you feel when you were there today? Most importantly, trust your gut. Don't take things for granted and listen to your kids. If you or someone you know is experiencing abuse, log on to our website for resources that can help. By the way, Carter is due back in court next month. According to his online court records, he posted bail last week. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, the Minnesota DNR is offering a new type of camping experience. Find out why coming up next. Record low today is 30 below from 1917. We hit 10 below at Duluth International Airport. Tomorrow morning won't be quite as cold. And in between, of course, the sky will be cloudy and a few inches of snow could fall. We'll talk about how many coming up after our break. Live Local CBS 3 News at 6 with Kristen Bucky, Anthony Matt. Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on live local CBS 3. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on live local CBS 3. Wow, a new Buick for me? To James, from James. That's just what I wanted. Is this a new Buick? I secret Santa myself. I shouldn't have. I have been very good this year. Wow. Wow. Don't forget you this holiday season. Get an SUV from Buick. Now everyone can get GM employee pricing on most Buick SUV models. Use it to get over 4500 total value on this Encore GX. Visit your Lake Country Buick dealer. At Hannah Johnson Fabrics, we put love, creativity, and talent into everything that we make. This holiday season, check out our beautiful selection of holiday fabrics and material. Our fabulous team can help you find the perfect materials for your project. We even have perfect laser print kits for mask making. We offer online shopping, curbside pickup, and two-day FedEx Express delivery. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and tune in for our Facebook Lives on Thursday nights. Happy holidays from all of us at Hannah Johnson Fabrics. Your business relies heavily on IT. Whether you know it or not, you need local experts that can solve any IT problem. You need Sighton. Proudly serving the Northland since 1994 and trusted by businesses just like yours. Sighton, always on. I'm Steve Little with Bath Planet. Safety is our top priority, so our workers are following all CDC guidelines to ensure the safety of both our customers and employees. Get your dream bathroom for zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till 2022. All of our products are backed by the Good Housekeeping seal of approval and come with a lifetime warranty. For a free estimate, call us today or go online to book your appointment. Bath Planet, out of this world service, down to earth price. I'm Carrie Harris, owner of Diabetic and Comfort Shoes. We have been in business in the Northland, helping you with your everyday foot problems stemming from diabetes to plantar fasciitis for the past 17 years. Stop in and see the complete line of men's and women's shoes, from Sass to Allegria to Vionic for those millions of people battling plantar fasciitis. And we still have a great selection of comfortable shoes for diabetics. Medicare and Minnesota Healthcare approved. Remember, no foot problem is too big or too small. We'll find the way to your soul.
It is the question that matters the most. ¿Dónde está? That takes you behind the story. Robert. It drives everything we do. It is the foundation of trust. Who did all of this? And the truth that propels us forward. What did you make of that? It is the question. One word, three letters long. And without it, our purpose. That's news. And our freedom fade. This is why. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS 3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by St. Luke's. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Since we last spoke, our low-pressure system has crept a little bit closer to our region, and now southwestern Minnesota getting up towards the Brainerd area. Roads are starting to go down a little bit here, scattered slippery stretches. South on I-35, once you get towards Pine County, starting to get a little bit slippery there as well. And 35 in Wisconsin, too. Many of the rest of our roads, though, holding on to the good side, but odds are they'll be going down as the night goes on as that snow chance gets closer to our region. There's a 70% chance we'll get it tonight and a 40% chance for follow-up come tomorrow morning. Here's a live look again at what's going on in Ashland, and the snow hasn't made it to that neck of the woods yet, but you can still see last week's blizzard snow still in that part of the country, and a little more is coming to call, like I mentioned, for every town here in our region. We'll show you who's going to get more and who's going to get less in just a little bit. But here's what's happening right now at Duluth Airport. It's 14 degrees, 77% for the relative humidity, with the winds picking up now easterly, southeasterly, going 13 miles per hour. And air pressure's going down. It's now down to 30.16 inches of mercury. That's still a little bit higher than normal, but with a pretty decent low pressure system at least grazing our area. Yeah, barometer readings are indeed going to be decreasing as the night goes on. So will temperatures at least a little bit, but not below zero. The cloud cover coming in will help keep temps up just a bit. And at this hour, we have mid-teens in the Upper Peninsula, a range of 15 to 19 being found in northwestern Wisconsin. And the range is going about 10 to even 24 degrees here in northern Minnesota. We find the 10 in Silver Bay, 20 over towards Baudette. Low temps tonight likely will stay above zero. And I think 15 to 20 above, which is a little bit warmer than normal. All right, our Doppler map decided it was going to back up. Let's hit the reverse button here and see what happens, see if we can get back to the Doppler map current situation. There it goes. It's stuck in place this time around. So low pressure system centered to our southwest is pushing uh, snow up towards the north and towards the east. And it's not overly heavy right now, but it could be persistent, sticking around from about 6 o'clock tonight till 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, even 8 a.m. for Minnesotans and towards the noon hour once you get towards the Upper Peninsula. And so because of that, well, the snow is going to add up a bit. Northern Minnesota, north of the Iron Range, is towards border country, perhaps two to four inches. No winter weather advisory for folks there, but for the rest of us marked off in the zones in blue here, that is a winter weather advisory, and three to six inches of snow could fall, again going away between eight and noon tomorrow morning as our low pressure system heads off to the east coast to bring those folks a chance for snow. And then a non-Arctic high pressure system pushes into our region. So no big cold snap following behind this low. It'll be sunny and relatively mild. I say mild because high temps will be near normal, which this time of year we know can be a lot colder than that. So tonight, really not bitterly cold. Minnesota low temps, like I mentioned, should go about 12 to 20. 70% chance for the snow, and it's a 70% shot for Wisconsin and the UP as well with 15 to 20 to low temps there. For tomorrow in Wisconsin and Michigan, after a 30% morning snow chance, will slowly clear. Highs could go towards 25, warmer than normal. Minnesota highs after a 40% morning snow chance could run 18 inland to 25 by the lake, pretty close to normal. And through the weekend, then for the new year, well, that higher pressure cell makes it at least a little bit sunny and a little bit mild. 20s as possible when 20 straight up is pretty much where we're supposed to be this time of year our next no chance tony that looks like it's going to be coming across on monday it's okay. just a 30 percent chance and the models are a little discombobulated on how much snow is possible yeah. then i guess we'll worry about that once we shake off yeah. this snow chance i call it a moderate snowfall not really okay. light but not the big blizzard like yeah. a lot of us saw yeah. last week we'll keep an eye on it with this snow system that's moving in tonight it'll be nice to shovel out tomorrow in reasonable temperatures versus those frigid temperatures we saw on christmas eve yeah. that was not a pleasant shoveling experience and if you got <laughs> some new outdoor toys for the holiday yeah you should be able to use them this weekend sure should thanks dave
Minnesota is offering a first-of-its-kind camping experience at a location rich in mining history. The DNR unveiled new eight new cabins at Lakes Vermilion Sudan Underground Mine State Park. You can reserve one year round starting Thursday. The energy efficient structures have heat, electricity, and Wi-Fi. These cabins are the first of their kind in a Minnesota state park. Still ahead in sports, Kelly's in with some good news from Grandma's Marathon. What it is coming up next. Bondolith Casino, open 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. daily, all non-smoking. To stay up to date with the news and weather that impacts you and your community, continue watching CBS3. CBS3 Live Cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Oh my gosh, wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, this new year, you can celebrate knowing you look your best with Plexiderm. Lifestyle expert Annette Figaro is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video that the viewers can watch while you and I talk. And you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging. And all he uses is a small amount, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock. And what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes in as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. And I did this to my father. We were at home and we were screaming four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> These lines bother me. They really do. And this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It feels great. Looks even better. I'm Neela. I'm 61 years old. I'm a professional personal trainer. It's so important to be in good health and to be fit and take care of yourself. How it makes you feel inside is amazing. Plexiderm, seriously, it fixes all that. It makes you feel as good outside as you do inside. Honestly, God, it's amazing. There's nothing there. Like, the bags are gone. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. So it targets all those problem areas. So this would be a daily thing or just when you want to, like, get rid of the bags? And yeah, you would it absolutely could be a daily thing. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look at your genre, this is it. This new year is the best time to get Plexiderm for only $14.95 and see it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Ring in 2021 at the biggest cash bash of the year. New Year's Eve hot seats and drawings at Black Bear Casino Resort. On New Year's Eve from 5 p.m. until 2 a.m. New Year's morning, two hot seat players each hour will win up to $750 cash. And five drawings each hour will start the new year off right for the lucky winners with up to $7,500 cash. That's 70 winners for a grand total of $50,000. Earn entry starting December 26th. Visit BlackBearCasinoResort.com for more information and make the bear your place. Find the home of your dreams with Homes by Edmonds. Whether you're buying or selling, trust Duluth's oldest real estate company, Homes by Edmonds, LLP. Sunday mornings at 1030 on CBS3. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS3. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. The here, Kelly Clarkson yeah. Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS3. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Now, CBS3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. Now, although Grandma's Marathon didn't get to hold their full slate of in-person races in 2020, they are targeting a return in 2021. And some good news for the Organization today, registration is full to capacity. Although it's not their usual limit, the full and half marathons were capped at 4,000 entries, while the 5K was limited to 1,500. If you didn't get a chance to register just yet, but you still want to run, you still have some options. Our charity partners are a great option. Uh, you sign up uh, for one of our 15 charity partners to be partnered with them. You fundraise from now until race day, and if you hit your mark fundraising, you get a guaranteed free entry into 
the event of your choice in 2021. So it could be the full, the half, or the 5K. They're also discussing expanding the current registration capacity. Schneider says this decision will come in the next month or so. Runners will still have the option to run virtually this year as well. So it seems I would have no excuses not to do it. To hockey, the U.S. taking on Czech Republic at World Junior. Score into the second. Bobby Brink, the pioneer. U.S. goes up, and there was no looking back. Trevor Zegers, the Ducks pick, makes it two. They would score three times in the second period and four times in the third. So safe to say they won pretty handedly. The Americans improved to 2-0 and and are top of Group B with Sweden. It may be a surprise to some, but the NFL's regular season ends Sunday. Not a surprise to Minnesota Vikings fans as regular seasons seem way longer than they ever are. Despite playing through a pandemic, no games have been canceled with only a handful of games rescheduled. Today, the league released their latest testing numbers. Between December 20th and December 26th, more than 41,000 tests were administered, which resulted in a total of 58 new confirmed positives, which breaks down to 21 players and 37 team personnel. Now, since testing began in August, nearly 900,000 tests have been administered. And now we're on the t subject of testing a week and a half following the conclusion of the NCHC bubble. The real world hockey begins this weekend in the world of college sports. Due to a combination, though, of positive COVID-19 tests, contact tracing, and quarantining within the Omaha hockey program, the North Dakota at Omaha series scheduled for this weekend has been postponed. Now, luckily, the series has been rescheduled for the last weekend in January in Omaha. The decision to postpone the series is consistent with the conference's COVID-19 protocols. A good reminder that we're still living in the real world and life does not take place in a bubble and you should still stay safe. UMD though, no positive confirmed cases as of right now and they are on at St. Cloud State this weekend. Though we're gonna have more on that coming up tonight at 10. For now, Tony, I'll send it back to you. Thanks Kelly and then we'll just toss it right over to Dave who's gonna give us a last look at the weather. Dave, we're still waiting some of that snow here. I know. I was just eyeing up the Doppler, and it shows it ringing the Twin Ports area, but okay. not much action happening right here at the head of the lakes now. Here's a quick look at the Almanac. Today's high temp was 14. The normal is 19. Tomorrow we may hit 20, so it'll be a little bit on the warmer side. And there's no big Arctic outbreak coming in behind this low-pressure system. So what we have tonight is a winter weather advisory for much of the area, except for the Iron Ranges to the north. Three to six inches of snow possible in the advisory area for the rangers up towards border country you could get uh, two to four inches but no advisory for you but my advice would be to just be careful on the roads for everybody this uh, snow should wrap up tomorrow morning about eight o'clock in minnesota it may be noon for the snow belt and that sets us up for high pressure to ring in the new year sunshine and high temps a little warmer than normal around 23 degrees thanks dave thanks for joining us tonight we'll see you again at 10.